and welcome to Kirchi Crochet Hooks. Please enjoy our free tutorials with just one of a 24 part series on teaching you how to crochet. Subscribe to start receiving our 24 courses that are delivered to your email inbox every few days. By the time you're done, you'll know the ins and outs of crochet. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So now let's get crocheting with Curtsy. Welcome back everybody to the Curtsy Crochet Hook program. This is lesson number 15. In today's lesson, I'm going to be teaching you how to do ripple crochet. It's ripple stitching and it looks amazing. It's one of those uh, types of stitches I absolutely love. It just with the right colors, with the right ideas in an afghan, uh, a table runner, all of this. It is just wonderful. So let's uh, now get you started on lesson number 15 of the Curtsy Crochet Hook program. And let's take you down to the studio table. In today's project, we're going to work with the Bernat Mosaic. We're going to use a 5.0 millimeter hook because that's what it calls for. So I got my curtsy crochet hook out and we are going to just create a slip knot on your hands. Now with the ripple stitch, it's actually a combination of two separate lines. And so I'm going to have to get you started in order to do this properly. So creating a slip knot, I want you to stay in sets of two. So no matter what you do, always count one, two. This never counts as one, so one and two and determine the size one and two and as soon as you get as big as you want to go you can stop and uh, this really makes for really sharp um, um, afghans, sweaters, tabletop runners but you just have to stay in sets of two in order to make this pattern work so I've been counting one two in my brain as I've been chit chatting so let's go as long as you need to go and then meet back up here and we'll continue to start this ripple stitch we just now completed the chain and what I want you to do is I want you to pinch with your thumb and your finger this one right underneath and I want you to chain up three. So one, two, and three. Using patterns they always say count back the third from the hook and this and that. Me, I just like to pinch so that I know exactly where I need to go. I'm going to double crochet so I'm going to wrap my material, just shift, shift my, my thumb out of the way, pull the material through, pull through, and two. So let's review double crochet again. So wrapping, going in, pull through, two, and two. And what I need you to do for this entire row is just double crochet yourself so as if you were just doing a beginner tutorial because we need to establish the base in order to continue uh, working on the stitch in the future. So let's uh, go all the way across and I'll meet you back up at the end. We'll start on the next level. You've just now completed the double crochet for the first line and now for this line I need you to single crochet. So to single crochet all we just do is chain one and we come into the very same stitch that we started with. Okay, With double crochet we would have already moved over one. And so I just want you to single crochet yourself all the way back across this line and that's what you need to do and we'll meet back up and we'll actually begin the actual ripping ripple process and you'll see how cool that we can get it to look after we're done. I've just single crocheted all my way across and now I'm going to begin the ripple process. To start the ripple process, it's actually a combination of double crochet and triple crochet. We want to chain up three. So one, two, and three. So this will be the edge. And so basically you got to look for the posts that are underneath and not the posts that are just right underneath, but actually looking even further down. So this post matches that one, matches that, so we want to go to the second over. So how we do it is that we wrap and wrap, coming in through the front, pull through, like that. And we're triple crocheting down. Okay, so it's going to spread all the way down. And so the next one that we're going to just do is going to be a double crochet. So wrap and through. Okay, so what we wanted to do is I'm going to explain that a little bit better is that we actually want to skip one of the stitches that are in the top. You can see that the one going down is actually skipping over. So if I turn it around, you can see that this is the edge, this is the one I skipped over, and this is the next. So let's do that again. So triple crochet, so wrap and wrap. So I don't want to get this one, I want to get to the next. Okay, so I'm coming down, and I'm triple crocheting. Okay, so I'm going every other one when I come down, and then I just have to look, and then this is the next stitch that's available, so I'm skipping that and just double crocheting into the one next beside it. And you can actually quickly identify 
these really easily once you get going. So wrap and wrap. So we're skipping the next post down here, going to the second one over. Pull through two and two. And coming up back into the top, you're skipping one, going to the second one over for a double crochet. Okay, so wrap and wrap, coming all the way down, we're just skipping over one, pulling it through two, two, and two, and then double crocheting, like so. So what's going to happen is that the double crochet is going to sit flat, and the other ones that are coming down in front are going to pop out towards you, creating a rippling effect. So what's the difference between this and a rib stitch? The identical reason, the, well, the main reason is that this, the way that I'm doing it right now, is going to be a one-sided pattern. So when you go to look around the other side, when we get closer to the end point, you'll notice that there is no pattern on the other side. It's completely flat, where this one has all of the action going on on this side. And the reason why that's happening, I should say, is that because the rippling is only going on one side, and um, the reason for the main rib stitch uh, difference is that that single crochet in between the, the middle is what is creating this to be a one-sided pattern. So if you want to eliminate um, that single crochet out and just do exactly what I'm doing here, you can take your chances and give it a try and see if it'll work for you because then you may be able to get the ripples on both sides if you really wanted to. Sometimes it's just a matter of playing with it. And while I was chatting with you, I did a single or triple crochet by accident. Okay, so we just go all the way down to the end of the line. Let's meet back up and uh, we'll just continue along and I'll show you what the next process of the step is. We're now getting closer to the end and basically we have only one more down. You can see we came down here, we want to skip one, we want to go to the next, which will be your last one before you run out. And I should have triple crocheted that. In a lot of these stitches, sometimes the wrapping process is different from each other and it sometimes takes a bit of getting used to, but once you get into your own rhythm and to the get deep into the pattern, it doesn't really matter. So in the very end, we're just going to come in to the side there and just double crochet as normal. And that's what it would look like at this point. And as I said, it's a one-sided pattern, so one side appears completely flat and the other side has the ripples. So let's now turn the material and we're going to single crochet. So every time we do a ripple, we're now going to single crochet in the line above it. So let's chain one and going in and single crochet all the way back across and we'll begin the process again of rippling and this time this ripple is slightly going to be different because I want you to um, go in between what you've already done in order to create what is called the ripple. So I'll see you in just a second. So I now finished this side again and now I want to create again. So we have the ripple then, we have the single crochet and now we want to chain up three. We're going to double crochet ourselves. So we're going to chain up three. So now exactly where you see the issue of, of everything going on. Okay, so you see this is the ripple, this is the outside. So now what we need to do is to establish to make sure that we are rippling in between the other posts that are popping out. So let's begin. So in this case we're going to go right into the next stitch available. Okay, in the last line, the one we came up, if you remember, is that we went right into creating the ripple immediately. So in this one, it obviously it has to be the other one. So now we're going to triple crochet and we're going to look down and we're looking past the single crochet into the one underneath and this one here will be set back slightly and you can tell it's in between the other two uh, that uh, triple crochets that we did earlier okay so now let's double crochet ourselves into the next one to the line above sorry and now let's the next one is down again so we just look these two are popping it must be this one coming in like so. So basically every line is identical to what you've been seeing in the last uh, two lines that we've been, the last three lines that we've been doing and basically you just have to work in between each. So when you go to do your next line you'll be doing a single crochet again and then the next line what we'll be doing is we'll be capturing these ones that are set back in order to bring them more forward. So let me um, fast forward now to the end of the line and we'll give you a better demonstration on what this will look like. To give you an indication on the edge instead of just letting you assume, do you see how this one here is pulling that one up right here? 
and the next one here is underneath and normally and what happens is that we always double crochet above it which is matching that means that this post here is, has to have just uh, a double crochet added to it okay so this may actually look really weird to you on the one edge or on both edges but in actual fact you have to keep these posts aligned with each other or you end up uh, with the material growing out of alignment so you can see you got a beautiful ripple going on uh, through it and so the next one the ripple then will be down and pushed in between here so we're going to single crochet again and then ripple and then we're going to capture these ones in between to create but it's like almost like a sandbar look and it actually looks really super super cool. So there you have it, that was lesson number 15 and that was the ripple crochet, again another favorite of mine. And you can really start seeing that you know your crochet skills are starting to build. We're now gonna schedule you for level, uh, level 16, so it's lesson number 16 and the honeymoon is over folks. We're now gonna start boosting you up to levels that you didn't think were possible, but I'm now gonna boost you up into projects and stitch work that are considered intermediate at this point and even to some could be considered expert levels. We're now going to move you to the Catherine wheel stitch in lesson number 16 and hang on to your booties. You're going to love this stitch. It's actually really fun to do and once you master it, it's one of those stitches that you'll have for a lifetime. And for me, a crochet, the Catherine wheel stitch is the, the most favorite stitch that I love doing because of the way that it looks after you're done. So let's now schedule you for level number 16, lesson 16, as we move you along in the Curtsy Crochet Hook program. Until next time, I'm your host, Mikey.